Hi everyone, Twee Meredith with the Model Homesteader. Today we are going to take a trip out to an area near Norris Lake. It's called Washburn, Tennessee. And the property is 16 acres. I'm really excited to go take a look at this one. The reason being is it is surrounded by water on two, maybe even three sides. A uh, big, big wooded area with a lot of potential from what we can tell. I think there may even be a stream that runs through the property, but I'm not sure. So come along with Baxter and I and we'll go take a look. Hi, Baxter boy. You are the star of the show, little one. <laughs> I sleepy. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi, Hello. He heard Chocolate Brownie Sunday, Sunday. Oh, you did hear Chocolate Brownie, <laughs> didn't you? You said, Would I, can I please have one of those? Or how about a Reese's milkshake? Does that sound good? A Reese's peanut butter cup milkshake? Yeah. everybody we are in Granger County at Norris Lake today we are looking at a 17 acre property that has multiple accesses to Norris Lake I would say that it bumps at least three different parts of Norris Lake which is really nice um, as for whether it has uh, dock access I don't know this at the time so we would have to find that out or you'd have to look into that um, give you an idea about the property. It's over to my right. We're pretty much on the corner of uh, Or one of the corners of the property and it's very It's kind of shaped like a Z so it, it it goes This way to the right of me a little bit and then it's gonna curve left Is that right? Do no actually so it basically is going to go along this way, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's going to go to the right a little bit, and then it'll go back to the left again. Yes. So that makes a Z. That makes the Z. Yes. Um, behind me is just a little sample that of how close you are to Norris Lake. Super duper. The water levels are low because we haven't hit the rainy season. But the nice thing is with Norris Lake, it is one of those, li those lakes. It's one of those lakes that does have water year round. So it's a nice, big, big, beautiful lake. And it's a great place for boating and fishing and swimming and all sorts of water activities. We're gonna head this way and start taking a hike up this uh, property and see what it looks like. Let's take a look at this pretty property. Mom is also trying to keep her eyes out for, you know, some morel mushrooms because it is the season. It's just the hard part is 
you really got to look hard and that's not easy to do when you're not specifically looking for just them. And I'm getting all tangled up. Oh my goodness. Hold on. We, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> this tree here for a moment. We want to talk a little bit about the utilities on this property. Um, electricity and water are available. Uh, sewage is not, so that's something you'd have to definitely bring on board. It is 17 amazing acres, uh, but it is very hilly. So what we're going to, what we're probably going to see as we walk this property is that not all 17 acres is going to be usable for necessarily homestead but it can be usable for lots of different things um, what we're going to be looking for is a place to be able to build a home um, you could always use part of this for hunting you could do beehives on parts of it where it might be a little too difficult um, parts of the areas where it might be a little bit more hilly I, I would suggest that you cleared it out just a little bit and you could put um, uh, sheep and goats on the hilly parts. If you find a spot that's not too terribly hilly, uh, pigs love this kind of um, location too because they need the coolness. It's really important uh, that you give them some sort of shelter because they just don't sweat. From what I understand, they don't sweat plants. Um, but as for the entire property for building a garden, it may be limited for that kind of stuff. Hey, everybody. <laughs> okay, so we are filming. I'm not an expert. I'm not an architect. I'm not any of that. But this seems like this would be a pretty decent area right here on the hillside to build your house. This isn't very steep. It's kind of flat here. I also like over here um, where it uh, kind of goes down in that little sort of a valley, but not really. But with a bulldozer or whatever, a little bit of shifting of the dirt, I think that this would be a really good spot to put a house, put a home for sure. Definitely can flatten this, this out enough to build a, a good size house, that's for sure. Right. That's what I'm thinking. So this would be a good spot right here. And you're not very far from the road as well. So getting um, a, a road built up to here wouldn't be bad. It's not too steep and it's not very far. You know what I didn't uh, think of before, which you, but you could do really easily on these hills, is vineyards. It may not be Napa Valley, but you could, well, you can do grapes. You don't have to do necessarily wine. Maybe not wine grapes. Now, I, there are vineyards in Tennessee. I know that. Yeah. I've seen signs for them. I don't know that Tennessee is known for the proper um, tempers, uh, tempers, temperatures, <laughs> the proper temperatures for um, vineyards for wine. 
if any of you know if it is or not, feel free to comment below, let us know. But I could be completely wrong. It just doesn't seem like it is. Um, but I know that they grow lots of grapes, edible grapes here. So even if it's not um, good enough for wine, I would say you could definitely grow a, a nice big grape vineyard. There you go. Is that what it's called? A vineyard when it's... Just for boring for old just grapes. boring old edible grapes. <laughs> Black grapes are my favorite. You can hear your voice echo. That's how quiet it is up here. Yeah. Give us a shout. Hello. That carried for quite a ways. I think it did too. Baxter, I cheat you with you. <laughs> Say hey, Dad. What's up? He's partially. Oh, okay. 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 This is his deal. This is his jam. More time because I just moved the camera. This is a little more steep <laughs> than the other side. This time without attitude. <laughs> this is a little more steep than the other side. Oh, you said without attitude. I'm sorry. This is a little more steep than the other side. So we are on one of the hills on this property and it's a really nice spot. Now we are near the edge on the property in one particular area but Peter's gonna pan around so you can see that this has actually got a really nice level area that would be great also for doing a homestead. And in fact, the property to my right goes out this way. And I think it would be beautiful to have a, a house over here that, I don't know if you have put them on stilts or whatever, but basically starts here on the flat part of the, the land and then goes Just basically out. out over the the hill and yeah. just overlooks all of it. The view is always great. But I'm yes. gonna pan real quick. So it's not a huge area. It's longer than it is wide. But it's big enough that you could put a house here. Definitely. Or a barn or whatever you're looking to do. Yes. Uh-huh. You could have a some of your livestock up here if you wanted to. If you wanted to have your house a little further down like where we had sh shown before as one of the ideas or the options. Mm -hmm. And then do livestock up here. Or you open fields of fire and you put up a deer blind. Oh yes. Well, I think this whole area is very ideal for hunting. So to me, I would pick out the areas that you need for the other parts of your homestead that are the most important parts. And then you leave the rest of it 
for that option of hunting, um, you know. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Let's get going because Baxter is sniffing something like crazy. Come on, Baxter. Let's do this. <laughs> First of all, I need to correct myself because I keep calling the place that's ideal for a home, a home site, a homestead. And this whole thing is about a homestead. So the whole property is a homestead. Um, this is the third spot, and I think this is my favorite so far, of the ideal home site that I think would be great. It, this is the, it's just, it's really flat. It's, it's much wider. There's just a lot more potential, I think, here. You have some beautiful rocks as a backdrop. Beautiful trees, some really big old trees up here, which are just amazing. Give you great shade, thin out the, the small ones, and you got yourself a really nice place for a house. But we're not done yet, so we're gonna keep walking. All right, Baxter? Are you ready to walk some more? Well, I suppose if I have to. <laughs> Let's go. That sounded more like a, a Mickey Mouse, but whatever. What do you mean? <laughs> that was more of Mickey than me. That's why I called mine retarded Mickey. I do wonder what these are. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody know what those are? Comment below and let us know. Whoa. You never want to see this. That's scary. You never want to see that. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. We need to get back to our car before the sun goes down. Good plan. Free, 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 free. By the way, Peter, who I've mentioned in the previous videos, is an author. He writes some scary beep, beep, beep stuff. Let me tell you. I love it all. Something I'd like to remind viewers that I've said on at least one previous video, and I will say here, um, anytime we give you guys information regarding any property, there's no guarantee how accurate the property information is. It is third party information by the time it gets to us. Sometimes it comes through a listing agent, and sometimes it comes through a listing agent and then an owner, you just, you don't know. So what is really important, I'm gonna wait until that car goes by. So one of the things that's really important is that you do your own research. On any property that you are interested in, do your own research. What comes to you on paper from a listing agent or from us or from anyone, you don't know if they are actual facts. The best way to find that out is to go to the county office of that property, where that property is located. Go to that county office and request all of the information you need. Codes, um, restrictions, all of that kind of stuff, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, all can change. It can change yearly. You just, you never know how often they're gonna change their laws. Um, so just make sure you do your own research. That way you are protected. If you have any questions regarding this property or you are interested in taking a look at it, please comment below and we'll get you in touch with the proper person so that that can happen for you. If you have enjoyed our video today and all our goofiness and the fact that we didn't fall despite how many times we nearly fell, it was more falling with style, 
We never actually hit the ground. I hit the ground. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. The cameraman apparently hit the ground. I missed it. I was probably catching myself. But um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Because ringing that bell gives you notification of any future video that we do. And if you are looking for that homestead for you, the right one, we're going to keep posting them. And hopefully you're going to find that, that right homestead one day. So thanks for joining us today and we'll see you at the next video. We're signing off and saying goodbye. Uh, somebody is already said goodbye, I guess. Baxter, can you say goodbye to all your fans? Goodbye, everybody. I love you. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by multi-genre author and my husband, Peter Meredith. The book is The Edge of Hell, Gods of the Undead, book one of two. This is an apocalyptic story, and yes, it does have zombies, but Peter takes unkillable zombies and adds history and necromancy, something very different and very original. I have always found archeologists to be very fascinating because they are always digging to find treasures of the past. But this time, they stumble upon something that should have been left buried for eternity. Because as man has proven time and time again, that the desire for power makes humans make poor decisions. This time, causing the fall of mankind. These aren't your normal man-made zombies. They're damned souls that rise from the gates of hell and they inhabit bodies of the dead. And again, as I mentioned, they are unkillable. Jack Drayden finds that the only way to have a fighting chance to save humanity is to spill innocent blood himself. But even with the best intentions, one can only be good for so long once their hands are bloody. Peter Meredith has written 41 novels, which include fantasy, drama, horror, dystopian, and, of course, zombie post-apocalyptic. All of his books are available on paper and Kindle, and 38 are available on Audible Books. Please check out the links here and then also below in the description on how to buy his books and also how to follow him.